Hi, good afternoon. This is Mr. Cassidy for part two of week one. I am one. We are continuing to work on PEMDAS, but now we're going to focus on two last ideas for these lessons. Um, let me go ahead and get my pen ready. Awesome. And let me skip ahead to where we left off. So where we left off is after having covered the main steps in PEMDAS, we're now going to talk about the distributed property. And what distribution means is, let's say we have three groups of whatever's in parentheses. So that's sort of what I think of when I think of a number in front of parentheses. I think of it as being three groups of the inside. And so in this case, let's say that the inside is x and 2. Let's say that means a hamburger plus two sodas. So what that means is we're going to have to multiply, since it's three groups of them, we're going to take the three and multiply it by each thing inside parentheses. If it helps, draw arrows like I'm doing here. And so that means multiply the three times the first term, multiply the three times the second term. That would be three times x and three times two. So we'd get three x plus six. Um, Notice, if, if we're thinking of this as like a, a meal deal, maybe it's one hamburger plus two sodas, then we've got three groups of them, means we should have three hamburgers and six sodas. So that's why we distribute. We It means three groups of what's in parentheses. So as part of the P in PEMDAS, we always want to, if we can simplify the inside, if this was just one plus one, do that first. But if it's a variable, we're going to distribute it in order to simplify. In the second case here, 4 times the quantity x plus 2y, that's typically how we read it, we do 4 times x plus 4 times 2y, and so we end up with 4 times x plus 4 times 2y, and then we can multiply these front numbers 4 and 2 to get 4x plus 8y. Here's our last example. What if we had 3x on the outside? Now, you aren't going to see this a lot in IM1. But 3x times the x means we are going to put, and then 3x is going to also go over and multiply by the minus 2y. So here's how you might write that. You would write 3x times the x minus 3x times the 2y. And what do we get if we have x times x here? Well, we're going to get x squared. So we end up with 3x squared. And here we can multiply the front numbers, the 3 and the 2, and get 6. And then x and y are going to get smushed up next to each other. And usually we put them in alphabetical order, so x, y. So this would become 3x squared minus 6xy. This is our three main examples. So let's look at uh, another example. What are we going to do to simplify this? Well, here, here is the main thing where people go wrong. Always circle the number in front of the distributive property or in front of the parentheses with its sign. I circle this negative or the minus symbol means the same as negative. So this is subtracting three groups of these numbers. So I'm going to multiply the minus 3 times the y, minus 3 times the x, and minus 3 times the 2y. Um, so what's going to happen when we distribute that? Well, here's what it would look like. We would do, if you wanted to write it out, we would copy the 12x because nothing's happened there. We're going to get a minus 3 times the y plus I'm going to put in parentheses minus 3 times the x plus minus 3 times the y at the end, oh, times the 2y. So what's going to happen here? Well, this minus symbol is going to affect the operation, or it can be simplified to the operation in front. So we end up with 12x minus the 3y minus the 3x, and then minus the 6y. And you might be wondering, are we done yet? Um, this is a major step, being able to multiply all the way through. But you should, sometimes there's one last part of simplifying. We want to do what's called combining like terms. 
So combining like terms means that we're looking for things that have the same exact variable. So for instance, here is 12x. I can combine that, that using my example from earlier. If I think of x as being like a hamburger, I don't know what it is. It's a number. I know it's missing. But I can combine it with other hamburgers. So minus 3x. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to do the operation, the 12 minus the 3, and combine those. So I get 12x minus 3x's is 9x's. Think of that, 12 hamburgers minus 3 hamburgers. Yeah, that makes sense, 9 hamburgers now. So how are we going to combine this? Well, minus 3y minus 6y, we want to combine them. We can think of that as just an integer operation, negative 3 minus 6. That's negative 3 hot dogs minus 6 hot dogs. And we get a negative 9 hot dogs here, or negative 9y. So this is the simplest form of the equation that we started with, or the, sorry, expression that we're starting with. Equations have equal signs. Expressions can just be numbers and letters in a row. Notice there's only one term with one x, one term with one y. And how simplifying works, let me give you one other quick example, is we really need to match up um, the letters and exponents. So if I have x squared plus 2xy plus y squared minus 2x squared minus 2x plus y squared. We have this long thing, and I know this looks totally challenging, but if we have an expression like this, our goal is to combine the like terms. So I look at, okay, my first like term is x squared. All I'm doing is addition or subtraction here. So I look for anything else with an x squared. Oh, ding, 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 there it is, negative 2x squared. So I'm going to group those together. I might move them to the front. x squared is well, what coefficient would be there in front? It would be a 1. It's just 1x squared. There's always an invisible 1 at multiplying anything. So it's 1 minus 2. Well, that would be a negative 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. x squared. All right. Here I've got 2xy, a positive 2xy. Is there any other xy's? No. This one's just an x. This one's a y squared. So I'm just going to copy it plus 2xy. I can't do anything simpler there. How about the y squared here? Hmm. Well, I notice there's another y squared here. Again, let's use that rule of the invisible 1 being multiplied. That's plus 1y squared. So 1 plus 1 is 2y squared. And the last thing that's left is this negative 2x. And I would just copy that. There's no x's to combine here. So to simplify that all the way, we just try to find, we base it on the letter and the exponent to match it up. So to sum it up, x squared y could not combine, it could not combine with xy. But um, x squared y could combine with another like 4 x squared y. It has to have the same exact letters and exponents to match. Okay, so here's the last example. What it, first, we're going to distribute, and second, we're going to combine like terms. So first, handle the distribution and answer the problem for the Ed puzzle. Okay, you should have multiplied the 2 times the negative 2 and gotten negative 4, and you copy the variable a squared. Then you do the 2 times the negative 4 here, and we get a negative 8a. Okay, just 1a is here. Now we're going to copy the rest of it. What invisible number could go in front of the parentheses here? This is a trick that stumps I am one people all the time. Well, we could put a 1 here, and that means we're going to distribute a negative 1 when you just see this minus sign, that means we need to change the sign or reverse the sign of everything in here. So go and multiply each of those terms by negative 1 and write your answer here. Negative 1 times negative 3. You don't worry so much about this stuff. This is junk that you don't need to worry about for now. 
All you need to know is the front numbers are being multiplied. Negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive. Negative times negative is a positive. 3, and then we copy the a squared. Negative 1 times a positive 17 is going to be a negative 17a. The a goes with it. All right, so now go ahead and combine like terms. Why don't you go ahead and combine the uh, like terms and write your answer. You should have combined. You Some people do it this way. Oh, some people do it this way, and I've, I've seen people do really well with IM1 sometimes when they take time to break it down like this. Maybe they put a box around one like term and a circle around the other. And then they combine the coefficients. So they're going to combine the front numbers. Negative 4, positive 3 is going to be a negative 1 when you combine them. A squared. Minus 8a and minus 17a are going to get combined to a minus 25a. And you can leave it like that for me. Um, if you're pickier, you might choose to get rid of this 1 because that's you know, a given. And you would just write negative a squared minus 25a. But ultimately, I'm fine with it either way. All right. I hope that concludes our lesson on distribution and simplifying. So first main point, remember, if you see parentheses and you can't do anything inside, we see a bunch of things, a banana, um, that's a banana, and we see an apple, that's an apple, and we see the number three in front, remember, that means three bananas plus three apples. We need to multiply it by the front. If we see a negative term in front, I want you to circle it because that's going to multiply and change the signs of everything inside. Second, we combine bananas and apples. There are separate kinds of fruit. So if you see negative three bananas and negative three, negative, I don't know, six bananas later on in an expression, we can combine those like terms to be a negative nine bananas. All right. Thank you for joining me. And I wish you a good math journey. Bye.